live from the Accustats Arena at Caesars Southern Indiana. Welcome to the 2022 Derby City Classic and the All-Around Pocket Billiards Championship. Thank you, everybody. Arguably Pool's most exciting event, and it's proudly sponsored by Diamond Billiard Products, Simonis Cloth, and Aramuth Belgian Billiard Balls. We also want to express our appreciation to our three signature uh, associate sponsors, which is OBQs, Master Chalk, and Outsville, and finally recognizing our terrific tournament direction team from Bad Boys Billiards Productions. It's our 12th consecutive year here at Caesars. We want to thank them for being such great hosts along the way. And we certainly want to thank all of our great DCC family and friends, whether you're here watching live in person or at home around the world, for helping to make the Derby City Classic the greatest event in professional pool. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you all very, very much. Okay, we're back in the nine ball division here for a little bit. Following this around four o'clock, we're gonna get into the one pocket semifinal, followed by the final. After that, tonight, we have the bank pool ring game, so please stay with us for all of that great excitement. Let's get underway. Now, our first player is from Angeles City in the Republic of the Philippines. I could stand here for a half an hour and list all this man's accomplishments, and I still wouldn't have enough time, so instead of doing that, what I'd like to do is just make a couple of brief, quick mentions. First of all, this man is a member of two halls of fame, the One Pocket Hall of Fame and the BCA Hall of Fame. He's also a living legend. We'd like to take an opportunity on behalf of everybody here, Efren, to thank you for what you've done all these years to make the Derby City Classic what it is and what you've done to contribute to the growth and popularity of professional pool around the world you are the greatest of all time, and we are honored to have you here once again. Thank you very much. and sponsored by San Miguel Beer and Puyat Sports, but anyway. <laughs> let's call him the magician. All right, thank you everybody. His opponent from Sandy, Oregon. He's a Bad Boys Billiard Productions commentator. He's sponsored by Bad Boys Billiard Productions along with OBQs and Diamond Billiard Products. Let's welcome Michael Deitman. <laughs> thank you very much. Okay, gentlemen, come on lad for the break if you would. 40-second clock, race to nine, rack your own, cue ball fouls. I'm gonna send it upstairs to the comm box now to the A-team, Mark and Double J. Take it away. Delighted everybody's here. We got world-class nine ball with perhaps the greatest player of all time, for sure the greatest player of my time. It's Mark Wilson and Jeremy Jones here. And Jeremy, uh, Efren's won the lag. Race to nine, any opening thoughts here? Yeah, just a little teared up after uh, Kenny's Kenny's little mention there of Efren and all he's done for the sport, and you know he's a guy that's done it with his cue stick and and his and his you know occasional mannerisms at the table that we get to see his fun moments, um, and just an incredible guy racking the balls right there. And I'll tell you, I don't know a lot about Michael, his opponent, but what a special moment to be there. Uh, as his opponent in the arena, yeah, you know, with a standing O there for Efren. So something that Michael will keep and cherish and, and you know, still trying to get the win here. But right. I've seen those. Efren's been playing pretty good pool overall. Playing with a, what appears to be a brand new cue, right? Yeah, that's what I thought. It looks pretty new to me, pretty white shaft. Um, not one I've seen. I've seen him here the last few weeks and online switch cues occasionally, but I haven't seen this one. So Efren with none down. And if you tuned into our last match, there's no way this one can keep up with the pace of that one and <laughs> probably no match in the tournament maybe. Yeah, that was tremendous. Corey Duell and Darren Appleton put on a show. Nobody lost, it was just finally Appleton ran out of time. 
Oh, sweet, sweet little hit here. A little Efren-esque here to start the match by Michael. He yeah. may not have got the snooker, but what a nice cue ball. Yeah, we were watching him preliminary warm up, and it was really our first time to really get to see him. And boy, he hits the balls good, no doubt about it. Yeah, he made a lot of long shots warming up. Okay, I don't think he really makes the two here, even though he might be trying to. Okay, pretty good offensive opportunity here with this combo, even though he's a little elevated. Nice shot and perfect control, Mark. Man. Yeah, this guy can play. There's no two ways about it. You can just see the way he goes after balls. Yeah, pretty nice setup here. It's got a little tricky just because the 6'9". So when he shoots the three, getting proper on the four to make things easy may be a little bit touchy. Got to find a little, little small window of a, of an angle on the four. I think. That's a little light, maybe. If he got straight there, then you got to pound this thing. Yeah, it's close, Mark. And it was just kind of touchy. Mm -hmm. Like right there, you might fall short, so you can use the rail to with top inside to come across the eight. Because if you get straight here, like you said, you got to pound it. The speed control becomes tougher. Yeah. I like the stroke, though. Pretty full through the cue ball there. Mm-hmm. Nice follow through. Stayed still. Mm-hmm. Like to take on this cut. Pretty tough for the right-hander, though. Man, I don't know if the six passes the nine, Mark. Oh, he's playing the safety. Okay. Efren could kick behind this one. It lays pretty decent to do that. I doubt he does that, but lays decent. Or two rail angle. Two rails right behind the 6-9 looks pretty easy as well. Like that. Oh, he wanted to hit before the side, not past the side. Has Efren played here a nine ball match on this table? That'll make a difference on a shot like that. Let me think a second. I know he played at least one one pocket. Yeah, I don't think he did play a night ball match. We've only did a couple. Yeah. Yeah. So a shot like that definitely makes a little difference on the slick table. Okay, this I don't think the six passes the nine, so that's why Michael's trying to take a little more time. Oh, maybe it does. Kind of the first one he's kind of steered a little bit. Kind of. Didn't really just kind of let the stroke out. You know, Ken Schumann gave that nice intro to uh, Efren. It was a standing ovation here uh, by everybody for a minute. And like you said, it was pretty touching. But also, uh, I was thinking, what a blessing it was that I was able to play around his peak time and get to see that. And I know you must feel the same way. That got to play against the very best, perhaps, of all time. Yeah, and, you know, the one thing that I miss um, probably, of course, I was pretty lucky to see, you know, be around his U.S. Open win and, and then, you know, many other wins. I got to play in some events, of course, that he won and did well and played him a ton of matches. But I wish I would have got to see him and, like, some of the other guys on some of the older equipment. You know, the slower, mm -hmm. you know, really where you get to see that brain on making these unique outs, you know, where the ball's clustered up a little more. Um, because I think that's where you really see the separation um, and his genius mind. And, and even with the best players in the world, there was a hair of separation when it came to that brain. Yeah, no question. Yeah, all the other top players occasionally make shot selection mistakes. Efren is impeccable on that because of his background in billiards. Yeah, and it's a different shot selection at times is the thing. It's a, 
it's even more elevated, <laughs> you know, when it comes uh, to, to the brain, uh, it seems like anyways. And, you know, you th like the zigzag shot, right? Mm-hmm. You know, when he makes the shot on Earl there, well, that mm -hmm. was in the final, right? Or semifinal, maybe? Uh, it was in Reno. I it was remember. in Reno, yeah, at the Sands. But, you know, it's one thing to make that. Do you know the, Do you remember the shot before how he got snookered? How unique of a safety he was playing, spinning oh, that ball yeah, and holding yeah. it behind that ball yeah. and then trickles yeah. it in. You know, like the, that kind of shot. That's a, you know, the, the Z shot or zigzag shot he made on the kick is one thing, but the shot prior will show you a little something about right. Efren, you know. So. Right. Okay, so two dry breaks, very much different than our last match. You know, it's one thing that I, I don't know how I started doing it really, but I heard Efren did it a lot, is just get out and see how the balls react. Don't have so much purpose on your practice as far as like trying to run out or play position. Let's just see what the ball, how the balls react. And mm -hmm. I feel Efren did that a lot, you know. That's why he's just so unique. And this is this one here. Is, he's going to get in between the three and six. Yeah, come and in come short. tight. It was just hard on this table, I think. Yeah, it went quite a bit long. Oh, until he got that second kiss, he was probably looking okay to get another turn. Yeah, now Michael's got to just make a little decision on the two. Everything else is pretty open. Oh, I wouldn't play this. Not against the greatest ever. He's probably going to find a way to hit it, even though it's going to be super tough. I think Michael is probably supposed to take his chances trying to open mm -hmm. the, the two right there and run out. But the bottom line, you're not going to three foul him. Yeah. Yeah, and you have ball in hand with the offensive, and the two's right next to it. You need to develop it. It was probably sitting about his ideal. You do not want to give effort, and he's going to hit something. He's usually going to hit it anyways. And 20% of the time, he's going to find a way to get safe after he hits it. You see that arm. He doesn't want to elevate the arm. He's got a problem with that right shoulder a little bit. It's been like that for a few years, and you'll see him. Especially a lot of times in the one pocket tournaments, because you got to elevate the cue with so many little unique shots because you're near the rail, right? He's shooting this because he doesn't want to elevate the arm. Plus, he can make the four. Look at that shot. Nice try. Boy, I didn't even think he could get between there. I know he queued up like he could, and, but from our vantage point, it looked like he was pinned in there pretty good. I sure did. You now he's on two fouls. So. Yeah, <laughs> I mean he can he can he could three foul Efren here. He could roll the one underneath the two five and put him behind the four, and make things kind of tough. Because the two five's no picnic. He's got to play a three cushion shot. I mean, a, excuse me, a kiss shot, Bayard shot. So will that be the achievement up here? Looks like he's looking at doing just that. Yeah. Is he going to play the 1-4 and break out the 2-5? I think he's going to go for the safety. Just a little subtle cue ball behind the... Well, that's probably not going to hold Efren. It could, though, because the two rails is cut off. So the 8's kind of in the way of the natural one rail. This could spread on him a little bit. I might curve this ball. Yeah, this is a very – see, it's yeah. the arm, though. He doesn't want to raise the the back arm. 67 years old is Efren Reyes. Okay, well. Yeah, no way to get position really here. <clears throat> All right, put him behind the three here, Mark. Bank the one. That would be great if he could do it. Looks like he can do it and did do it. Yeah, I don't think yeah, I don't think you would call Michael, you know, a champion, right? But I seems like he's played pool for a long time. He goes in the right direction a lot. 
Looks like he can spin the ball just above the four and come two rails into the one. Won't crush it. Oh, he's going one rail. Never mind. <laughs> Good hit. Even had some power velocity there trying to get some separation didn't work out but it was a good hit nonetheless Michael switching hands now gonna play a little southpaw thinking better of that looking for the ridge he shot a few lefty uh, warming up he made them both that's that's one area of the game that I can dismiss and don't even need to warm up my left hand I do not use my left hand on this Coordination is just a funny thing. I can't figure it out really, but kind of make guesses on why things are like they are. But like I'm not very good left lefty at all with the, you know, I can make the shots you need to make. You know, you're close to it, cut it in. You know, you can't reach it, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to catching something, I'm way better with my left than I am my right. Maybe playing baseball those years with the glove on. Mm -hmm. I, don't, I just don't understand hand-eye coordination fully. And the way it works. And that was a little bit because of settling on the two, huh, Mark? Yeah. He took a lot of he, maybe distance, right? And he went left-handed. You know, I think he should have kept the bridge out. He used the bridge on the shot before. And I think because he just could, all he could do was roll it. He not very coordinated stroke-wise with his left hand like he is with his right. And you talk about long days and. Really long days for this man at 67 years old. And maybe longer, you know, there's plenty of guys in their 60s playing in this event, right? But Efren's really here to compete in this event, you know, and, and, and get better and feel like if he makes put some matches together, he can yeah. make a deep run. Mm, nice stroke. Sure was. Got a lot of action on that. Yeah. Now, this is just wide enough. You almost need to check this up with some inside spin or you're going to get really thin. I agree. Michael undoubtedly. Probably trying to shake off a few nerves here in the first couple games, being on the TV table. Plus, you know. <laughs> yeah. You played a guy that the uh, MC says, I could stand there for a half hour and not cover it all. This is, and from Oregon, Michael Diekman. Yeah. <laughs> right? <laughs> How would you not be intimidated? And that's been the common miss out here is the overcut, not using the side rail on those small angle shots. Saw one from Darren. Just one. And Ruffin got a little in between, but should follow this one rail over with the nine. So playable. Doesn't have to get great, great on the eight. But. Efren's such a humble guy, too. He, he, he doesn't brag. He doesn't spend any time. I mean, he was... I know him, and even when they're saying all those nice things about him, and he knows it's true, but he's still a little embarrassed in front of a crowd. He, yeah, he was making it more about the crowd there, you could tell. Yeah. Clapping with the crowd. Yeah. You know, really making sure they understand that he appreciates them, just along with them appreciating him. He was in St. Louis about two weeks ago, and I was watching him play well, Eight ball. And uh, he came over to me, and he, he was making some outs that, you know, average pros wouldn't make. He says, no, not playing good. Cue ball no good. Cue yeah. ball no good. <laughs> I'm like, it looks pretty fine to me. All right, nice shot there. One, one is our score. Kind of a messy game there.
Not sure if Michael realizes he has to rack your own. Michael Deitchman. Yeah, they come from all over for the dirt DCC, don't they, Mark? They do, yeah. Yeah, West Coast, Canada, South America, of course, Asia, Europe, Middle East. I'm trying to think of a few more. I'm sure I'm missing some. Oh, New Zealand. Caught a few guys from the... Kuwait. Yeah. Al Shaheen. Yeah, with a few guys from there. Now the break, uh, we've had two dry ones so far from that same left side. We'll see what Mr. Deachman can get going. Sponsored by Bad Boys there, Productions, who do a lot here at the Derby. All right, the reason why, you know, the difference I see between the breaks of the last set versus this break is a flat cue ball. I saw both Darren and Corey applying outside spin, really trying to push that corner ball, and that's what the spin does. And I can't explain why it does it, but it sure does do it. And I see the guys play with that heavy spin. Now he's going to have to hit this one well. The three does go by the six, but, you know, even in his heyday, this is the type of shot you got to commit. Now, Ephraim with a unique, you know, people used to, I used to talk about the pause at the cue ball, and I, I really believe it's a very important piece of your fundamentals. And people used to tell me, well, Ephraim doesn't pause. And I said, well, yeah, he does. He just does it different. He pauses, and then he takes one more pump, like right there. You see it? Mm -hmm. Which I know you've known it. I mean, you, you've watched this guy and played this guy maybe, you know, away from the t tournaments as much as anyone. And then there a few years ago when he was actually playing a lot of pool, Mark, but he was struggling a little bit. Yeah. I watched, and he wasn't pausing. You know, he what he does, again, he pauses at the cue ball, then he takes one more pump. And a lot of times when you see those unique fundamentals like that, it's because they started at a young age doing something. You know, yeah. that was very, you know, they kind of got set in their ways doing it. Just see their pants. There's no training. There's no coaches. Philippines. Yeah. And he's going to put Efren in a treacherous spot here accidentally. He's going to kick hmm, two rails underneath the five here to the short rail right where the cue ball's at. That's the only way I can really see to get at the three here, Mark. And the thing is, he he kicks so well with these. Watch. He won't kick it hard either. He's going to try and come underneath that three. Two yeah. rails at the eight. Yeah, he, he's going to have to warp it a little bit off that end rail. So that means he's going to go below center to lengthen it out so he gets it closer up to the side pocket there rather than a flat ball. See the speed, though? And the long has gotten him twice on this table. Too long. Yeah, on two kick shots. Yeah, and... You know, I wouldn't say the stands are completely full, but they're pretty pretty darn full. The upstairs, pretty full. They got to have a great viewing from a top here. And these players and, and these, not, not just fans, but players as well, they know this isn't the finals or anything or near the final. This isn't Efren versus Alvin Ocean or something like that. You know, Efren's a pretty good favorite here, you would have to suspect. Not taking anything away from Michael, but just getting out of how how much all and everyone appreciates effort and they want to come sweat him as much as they can before, mm -hmm. you know, maybe he doesn't make these trips to America. So It's a hard trip, and then everybody has you for something, and so you really have to be a giving person to make these trips, and then it doesn't pay all that much. So Yeah, what a nice shot that was. A little unlucky to not hit the six, even though he came away with a shot, I think a little tougher shot than if he had contacted the six going by. Good shot. Yep. Maybe a little little fortune catching the point. I think his cue ball might have been a little hot. 
And he's going to get a little out of line on the nine. So decisions. I think if he cuts it in the corner, he goes long on the scratch. He's banking it. Oh, caught both points. Now we'll get a good look at how Efren's feeling on this one. If his tip slashes to the side, he won't be feeling real good. It went pretty straight. <laughs> and you think he ain't trying to win? You know what I mean? Like, I know that he overcut it and whatnot, but he was playing a speed to where <laughs> he had a chance of a, mm -hmm. a, a mild backdoor safety. He's never getting a snooker, of course. That's only the nine on the table, but. Well, sometimes your stroke will leave you, but your knowledge never does. Yeah, and that's just instincts. Built over time. Looks like he's trying to cut it to me. Oh, no, he banked it, and he swished it. Good Great shot. shot. Two to one, Deachman over Efren Reyes. So Deachman hit the first bank pretty good on the nine and hit the second bank really well. Yeah, nobody has their picture up more than Efren in this building. Is that correct, right, Mark? That's absolutely correct. Even the jackpot winners out in the casino. <laughs> I think... Uh, I think, what was it? He's won nine individual events and five all-arounds. Yeah, and, you know, when you talk about the brain and percentages and, like, in the moment, what are you supposed to do? You know, races of three magnify that, you know? And Efren really probably, that was a good thing for him. You know, under the pressure, what decision are you going to make versus what decision he's going to make? Um, and c just because he's been in so many pressure moments, races of three, it starts out pressure and the other events, banks and one pocket. A little longer race here, of course, nine and nine ball. But ah, cue ball. You could see it right from the get. He did make the one on the break, though. And it looks like a touchy position shot on the three, even with ball in hand. Doesn't go by the eight in the corner. Doesn't go by the nine. Doesn't go by the six. Not a great route. What's he going to go between the three and eight with the cue ball? Is he going to go to the right side of the eight with the cue ball? What do you think, Mark? Between them, I think. I guess that's where he's going. Yeah, just mildly. Looks like good speed. Then he's going to go right into the three. Yeah. And mm. Way too stretched to probably shoot the combo. Yeah, it's awkward combo because the cue ball's going away from the direction the three would be heading. Yeah, I think if he could reach it, you know what I mean? If it was that type of combo, I think he could hold it up, but I think safety is what we're going to see. No, he's looking at shooting a combo. He just sized up the three into the six. Got to hit this with like a soft, straight draw to hold. Play position for the bank. Now the bank's there. He can certainly cut the three thin enough, but the cue ball's going to be screaming back and forth. His shot is there as well, but really hard to hold shape. The cue ball is going to be near this end rail, and the three is going to be, you know, out a little bit. So, made a really nice bank last game. Yeah, sure did. Looks like he's playing the six. He is. Smart to play speed. with speed, but you just lost it a little bit. And the thing is, he hit ball first on the six. If he would have hit rail first, the cue ball would have ran much, much hotter and gotten at least open. I don't think he would have got a, much of a shot. But. Yeah, hit that pretty nice.
things. Do you draw this, Mark? I like drawing it versus follow myself. Mm-hmm. You spend so much more time in the open at the five to draw. If your speed's perfect, the follow's fine. It's just that you only get position right at the last moment. Right. New cue, maybe? I mean... Yeah, very uncharacteristic miss. When we watched him beat uh, Roberto Gomez in the one pocket, it was a performance that was you know, vintage Efren Reyes. I don't know if you remember that yeah, match. Yeah, absolutely I do. 3-0, and uh, Efren made every shot. And then today he comes in with a different cue and is clearly not gauged in the speed or the spin volumes or the amount of squirt. And his confidence appears to be down a little bit. He's playing... Uh, eight hard days, and I'm sure he's tired. Great chat. Yeah, can I get a, I thought was a friendly kiss. Now, I don't know. He still may pass the nine. It looks like it does. Maybe not. Treacherous little combo here, cutting it back. Okay, friends, is he going to get a pocket? Is the nine going to get it in a way? Wow. Ooh. So now what? Cut it in the side, I guess. Yeah, I mean, he will, but. I think just a straight high ball. Well, he's going to cue it with outside, I think. Nice shot. That yeah, was. And he got a lot on that, so maybe it wasn't as thin as it appeared to us. Right. Yeah, he bent the cue ball quite a little bit. 2-2 two -two is our score. <laughs> if it's calling a timeout. <laughs> he smiled at the crowd. <laughs> He's such a humble guy. He's the most beloved pool player ever. That's a great player. Usually there's some little faction that doesn't like you. <laughs> Not in Efren's case. All right. Efren's got the rack set. The match is tied at two games apiece after the breaking. Eight yes. balls on the wing. Sticking to that side rail. He's gotten the ball down. The nine was pushing towards the corner. Going to have a shot on the one, but it's nothing friendly with the cue ball jacked up over the four. And I don't know if the two nine's makeable, the two nine combo. It doesn't appear so. Now you'd have to get down below it and billiard it in, I believe. Oh, he's jacked <laughs> up, and it's a, that's his bad shoulder. So I think he's going to take the nine out of the play altogether and prevent a quick rack. Yeah, he wants to move the two a little bit as well. <laughs> yeah, and the funny thing is, you know, he's been in the country for a few weeks. He's played a few, a few tournaments and some matches. And I watched, and I actually brought it up on some a broadcast that I did from home, and Brought up that shoulder because I saw it so many times, him having problems with it when he was here for, you know, the last few stays. And I didn't see him really mess with it too much. And I saw him raise the cue and the, the arm in the air. And, like, he seemed like it was better. Mm -hmm. And now maybe playing so much pool since he's been here, and not just at the Derby, but here in the States, maybe he's aggravated a little bit. Touchy shot here, no matter what you're doing. And he just needed to hit it. That's all. Let it go and let the cue ball run up table. Now, this is where Efren should still be pretty accurate, huh, Mark, when he's close to the ball? Yeah, and the, the master of spinning balls, too. So he hasn't shown it thus far, but we certainly expect that he will round into his good form. Wrapping around the eight with heavy spin. 
Yeah, timing's just off just a little bit. And it doesn't take much when you're involved in all that side spin. Oh, okay. Rolando has now showed up with a different cue. Heifer switching back to his. Oh, no. Yeah, he is. Is it? Is yeah, it that's the, the one. Yeah, that's the okay. one. No, I don't My. think so. He's handing it back out. <laughs> well, that is the one he was playing <laughs> oh, okay. with, but I don't know. Very different with ball in hand. Shoot it by the one, by the five, and follow between the nine and five. Could go this way as well. Play the other side, and I'm wondering why exactly. Maybe just because. I guess from that side you go towards the four a little easier with high ball. I guess that's why he went that route. I mean, either's fine. I wouldn't say one's right or wrong. I was just trying to figure out why. Always trying to learn something a little bit. One, you couldn't get tangled up over the top of the four, so. Yeah. Wound up pretty thin here, though. Sure did. The five goes in the corner by the eight, though, so he doesn't have to try and play subtle for the side. He can come back and forth. Yeah, he's not feeling good at all here. Something's awry because of one, he never plays position like that from that previous ball to get on the four that thin where he's going to make a heck of a shot. <laughs> but mm, he's got some cover here. The five ball got in the way and saved him for the time being. The cue ball's got to come back, you would think, here. Yeah, like that. Good shot. Good shot. Now, Efren will try and use the eight and the five, maybe. Probably more just the eight. This is natural here, Mark, isn't it? One, two, three rails dropping right behind the eight. This is all about the rail speed. Well, he played it like that. I thought he'd go ahead and get to that side rail and then back behind the eight. Yeah. Or maybe he was trying. He on. hit it heavy. Yeah. You, know, you can see how far the four went. All right, Deachman with a good scoring opportunity now. Good shot. Maybe even got too much out of it, Mark. He really got a lot out yeah, of the cue ball there. I haven't seen Incardone in a few days. I don't know. He left he... yesterday. Okay. Yeah. I do see Jerry Forsyth in the arena good to see you uh, that's going to be behind the nine unless it really grabs it's going to be close i think he's okay oh, sweet stroke there oh it was too What do you like here, Mark? Well, uh, I think he's going to shoot in the corner. But I guess that's probably the best shot. Going down, playing safe, no good. Not easy to get a good safe. Overcut it. Yeah, that's the tendency of the miss, it seems like. It's the overcut more than anything. Everyone's had a couple thick ones, but just as a whole. All right. Draws back to the corner, most likely here. He could go over for the side, but you doubt that. And Efren Reyes will regain the lead at 
Rack number six set to begin. Eight ball was on the wing, almost hit the corner. Five ball found the side pocket. Six yeah. ball gives the one a friendly bump. And if he can reach it easily, which I think he can, just got to come one rail towards the three with the cue ball. A little high, the three, of course. Yeah, he's not getting as much out of the ball, it doesn't seem like. That was a center ball draw, and he didn't get that effective spin, like maybe the tip is still a little bit coated or, or not spinning the ball, not biting on the cue ball like we're used to seeing. Tough shot here. Yeah, that up and down, that's definitely one of the shots that he's made a lot of money with, the thin <laughs> cut coming straight up and down. Under pressure, used to be so good at hitting the mark, even when there wasn't a big alley to come up and down, you know, like just a small little, yeah. little alley to come up. Man, that was much more of the stroke we're looking for from Efren, or we expect, I guess. for a first break and run here, Mark? Yeah, looking good for it, too. Made a couple nice position plays there so he didn't have to exert himself being a shot maker through that rack. Routine nine ball now. Efren will expand his lead. Four games to two, taking advantage of the unforced air. Yeah, and you could tell the crowd was waiting for that break and run by Efren. Really making making sure he knows they're paying attention to his every move. We were talking in the intermission that uh, you never know how long the Efren Reyes will continue to appear at these events, and we don't want to miss a match that we can see, even though it might not be vintage. Yeah, but... You know, the one thing about Efren, even though, you know, most would say he wasn't a real vocal player, um, there's a lot more to vintage Efren Reyes in my mind than just him swinging the cue. You know, those timeless smiles. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, the the little lazy arm up in the air when he wins, kind of like, you know, mm -hmm. like he does. And it's yeah. just, just some unique things by a very unique champion. Okay, this is the spin shot. If the two goes, he would hardly ever pass up on. He does know that the nine's in play here coming two rails, also the corner pocket. It's the feeling I get anyway. See, I think he's looking to see. I think he is coming right at the nine with the cue balls, the feeling I get. Yeah, that's the... That's, to me, that's twice that he's hit that kind of shot. Very, very thick. And that, to me, tells me something about the new cue stick. Because uh, that, 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 that was some mark he missed there, uh, Mark. And it's one of Efren's all-time best shots. The low outside, throwing yeah. the ball in, you know. Yeah. It's almost like a shot that, you know, even though he's not in his prime, I still feel like he's one of the best at. See if Mike can take advantage. Now he's overcut another one. That's easy to cut the balls out there. They cut a little easier on the slick table. Do you just come towards the three here? At the three? I think that's a little safer than trying to come across the three. I thought he might play the combination on the five, but maybe you're right. Oh, no. No, he, he is. Yeah, he that. is. You're right. I thought the two went. He may dig on the cue ball, but. That was probably a better shot leveling out. I think the three kind of had him impeded a little bit yeah, too. Yeah, to, to dig on the cue ball, right? Okay. He's got to make sure he doesn't apply much English to this if he's going to go for the side on the five. Uh-huh. 
Okay, speed was pretty decent. He didn't get behind the six. Speed's perfect here. Not the easiest of shots, but certainly very gettable. Yeah, just definitely just got to go through your normal and pay attention. Good shot. Put the heart of the pocket. 4-3 is now our score. Deachman will be breaking. Four balls, the wing ball. He made it. Yeah, you see how much spins on the cue ball, though. Right? I really yeah. think most of the guys I see that make the corner ball really have that heavy spin, something that they say it pushes the, the, the corner ball a little more. Kind of got to believe him because I see it happen a lot. Yeah, apparently so. Okay, playing a bank, but really kind of playing a bank without really doing much with the cue ball. Huh. wonder if he was that's weird. maybe trying to three rail it around. Right. I think yeah. he was trying to play safe because he tucked the cue ball up there along the rail. That right. Just got into a little too much power. I think in his heyday he takes on the three seven combo, but here I don't know if he's really wanting to get at that. Might bank this one ball cross corner to get the cue ball closer to the three. He's elevating, so maybe so. Oh, the cue ball scratch, scratch on the side? Yeah. Wow. Wow. <laughs> I was watching the one cross back and forth, and I didn't even notice the cue ball. Well, good thing for Efren, he didn't make the one. That would make things really easy on Michael. If the six wasn't there, you could try to draw into position a little bit. I mean. Yeah, this is, <clears throat> there will not be any of the top players that take ball in hand to put it here. Mm -hmm. It's amazing when the balls are at a slow speed. It's almost like they have Velcro on them. They yeah. Just connect. Looks like he might get the hit. He did. <laughs> On a miscue. Good solid miscue, though. Mark. Yes. If we're wanting to dig down and draw this back out to the center of the table, you really have to spin this. Just didn't quite get there. He can go three rails at this behind the five. He can go two rails. Kind of like the two rail a little bit myself, when normally you would really go three on a lot of these, but the way the eight's laying here makes me feel like I like the two railer better. I think the eight's going to help him out maybe. And he came across it.
That draw shot also might have been a shot where the shoulder came into play. Yeah, right. Okay, got by it. There's a little little rub on the nine, but it's not gonna hurt Michael. And it's gonna get a little on top of it. So a little more stretch than he maybe wanted, plus a lot more of a cut than he wanted. Yeah, you got to be pretty tall because you're more than a diamond past the side pocket. Yeah, he the good thing is tall. he's just hitting a high ball, which helps the stretch a little bit. Okay, Hit it, there you go. They're going to be tied for a piece. Okay, it's a race to five now. Both players having four. We're going to nine. Seven ball is the wing ball. Pocketed the wing ball last time. The wing mm -hmm. ball and the three ball went right in. Yeah, really nice connection there on the rack. Really uh, didn't, didn't unload on them and got nice movement. Yeah. Maybe, you know, the camera may be fooling us. He may have just a sliver of the right side of the one. Even if you got to curve this, Mark, now, you know, this isn't critical situation, but even if you got to curve this a hair and come across it, pretty safe shot a lot of times because you're banking it and running the cue ball. Now he's hit it a bit hard. And now he lost the cue ball, but the one maybe a little more speed on it than he wanted. So effort now with ball in hand and a good chance to take regain that lead. He didn't do much there. It's no, and it's trying to draw. It's almost like a worried stroke when he has to draw a little bit, Mark. He's just a little worried of what's going to happen. Like he doesn't know if he's going to get too much on it. Maybe sometimes, of course, worried about getting the draw period. If you can tell. One thing with a brand new cue, and I'm not making excuses because this is just not efforts a game, but. That shaft is stiff, and if the tip is a little bit slick, sometimes it doesn't respond at all like you're intending. That adjustment period and break-in period for a new cue. Yeah, the one thing about Efren is when he played his best, it, wouldn't, it wasn't like an 11 millimeter shaft or anything, but it wasn't real big. And this one to me looks a little thicker than maybe yeah. he's uh, you know accustomed to. It's going to be a little light, so he's going to have to work the rock here. He was coming for the side. Should be just straight draw. He can add a little inside if he wants to catch that second rail, or he can just come one rail. Looks like he's going to throw it, actually, with outside of here. Yeah. And he put the outside to help keep the cue ball away from this cushion, but then he hit it just a little bit too high for the, 
the judgment on that spin the grab. Luckily, he found his right in front of the side pocket, so he can get to the center of the ball. I sure like to know which, which kind of shots he uses to judge cues as far as like spin, deflection, feel, whatever, or if he just needs to hit a lot of balls. Well, in my experience with uh, Efren, he sometimes switches cues intentionally because it makes him concentrate harder because it, it doesn't play the same. He's not comfortable. He doesn't get complacent. And sometimes you'll see him switch cues in the middle of a match, and you think, well, this is preposterous. You know, but that's, that's him, and he's also a very superstitious guy. Won't like to talk to you on the phone because he believes the spirit goes through the phone lines. Doesn't like his shaft real clean. It takes the magic off of there. Yeah, he added spin on that one. He complied and got the five down on the side. He's got a tough shot on the one. Nothing easy. He could roll it in the side, and it looks like he can go to the rail and hold that gap between the six nine. He could cut it in the corner as well. Come across two rails and have a shot on the two. I think he's going to go offensive, huh, Mark? Yeah. This is a daunting shot in the side pocket. So he went for the corner, overcut it. Our good friend Mark Kendall sends in that uh, Efren played Corey till 5 a.m. this morning. Yeah. They played pretty late, that's for sure. I watched the end of that, so... Thought that was, at this moment, very tough game for Cor uh, for Efren. Mm-hmm. All right, got a good chance to make this, I think. Two rails if he kicks that way in the side pocket with the three being there. I think it's a possibility. Let's see if the long, the long has gotten him on a few kicks. So long on this table would actually be on the right side of the one like that. You know, not the other side of the one like a lot of kicks would be. So the slick table has definitely gotten him on a few kick shots, Mark. Oh, nine ball. Oh, nine ball. one here may not even shoot at this just bank it away use a seven to hold the cue ball mm -hmm. just a little high right English right here and and you don't have to get the two all the way down you just got to cut it a little bit and the reason why you don't try to get it all the way down oh he's hitting left so that means he's maybe trying to make it no, he's, he's playing that kind of safety that's fine super nice <laughs> Watch out. It ain't done. Mm -hmm. It's not done. Got a rail, too. Very controlled safety. Yeah, maybe the best ever with the object ball. I mean, it's one mm -hmm. thing, the cue ball control. There's all the greats are, are unbelievable at that, and all the greats are unbelievable at the object ball control, but Efren may be the best ever at controlling the object ball. Yes, those are skills that went away as carom billiards games and balk line billiard games where you have to control all three balls, and that's what contributed to Efren's success rate on controlling the secondary object ball on combination shots. 
And the rotation games all required that too. Yeah, in the rotation game, a lot of times it's, you know, controlling the object ball with a little more speed on it, whether you're double banking it, crossing it over the end rail. It's not just out in the center of the table like he does so well. That two ball wasn't going to another rail or anything like that. It was just pure control clipping it, which is more difficult, in my opinion anyways, than trying to move the ball like, uh, you know, a couple rails where you get a little feel. Mm-hmm. Okay, has he sacrificed the distance here on the seven? A lot a lot of players would. Rather than coming all the way back down, we'll see. Stayed down pretty good. Look uh, out nine. It's gonna be close. He's okay. Hmm. <laughs> he was thinking he was getting on past the nine there. for another two-game lead. Six four. Yeah, no matter what, it will forever be fun to watch Efren stroke decision making. And then all the great memories that he's left us with. Yeah, and after this match, we'll have a little small break, but it won't be long before we'll lead into the semifinal of the one pocket division. Huge match. Fetter Gorsh, Darren Appleton, Josh Roberts got the buy into the final. And Josh has had one heck of a year already to start um, with a big win. I believe it was in Birmingham in the, in the one pocket. Almost swept the board there in Birmingham, went in the one ball, one pocket mini, which is not easy. Uh-oh, eight ball. Okay, a two real kick, maybe a one real kick with the nine there. It gives him a little bit better bigger and better chance to make the three and what I was getting at Josh Roberts won the one pocket played great beat many Filipino players and then went on just to take second in the nine ball division out of 160. Ooh almost uh, caught that nine. That a nice effort. Four is a little funny, but I would like to think he cuts at this. I mean, the four is a little covered up, considering the cue ball is coming hot down this end of the table. Don't think he's spinning it too much. And he did. So, again, a very thick hit when he uses that side spin like he's not in command of the deflection of that cue just yet. Seems like anyways, Mark. Yeah, definitely uh, <laughs> not vintage and definitely not the, what we're used to seeing with the spin shots at all. Because he usually makes an adjustment by now if it was the case. Nice shot there to thread around the six ball. Plenty of angle there. Easily come across. This is where you don't try to get super close when you come across. 
and stay a foot or two above it. Pretty okay. Here, right spin should easily get two rails on the eight. He could just come to the back of the eight also, huh? Without the yeah. right spin and play yeah. the eight in the same corner. Not terrible shot, really. Most want to do this, but just in case you didn't want to add side spin to that seven ball. Thing about side spin is, you know, if you're going with the flow, if it's outside ball, you know, you should stay pretty confident with it overall. Don't be afraid to use a hair. Very rarely met pros that don't put up just a hair of that English on there. Mm-hmm. It's almost like a controlling thing. They want to control the connection between cue ball and object ball. You center, center it. When the stroke's off a little bit, it can act a little skiddy, kind of like Mark, and grab the object ball, it seems like. King Schumann. Getting a little of the chalk dust off the table. Bergman's one I talk to about that a lot when we work together. Is he just said, Jeremy, you know, we do some drills that are just center, you know, yeah. like center low or center yeah. high or whatnot. And he's like, Jeremy, I just rarely ever do this. <laughs> he's like, mm -hmm. even if it's an eighth of a tip off to the outside, you know, he, he, he likes that controlling feeling. And that's a pretty common thing, especially I know with Siegel. the top players. Yeah, Mike Siegel always did it too. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I wouldn't say I'm totally guilty of it because I've been trying when I have played to really – understand what center can do um i started at 17 mark playing pool so i was pretty much almost an adult right so i understood english quickly which is probably a fault <laughs> overall you know i didn't go a year with just center ball like a lot of youngsters do right mm -hmm. and so maybe learned english a little quickly to to and which isn't a terrible thing but also made me involve english a little bit more so it's hard for me to maybe just hit totally center a lot of times. All right, good cut shot here. If he cuts this, he got a good chance. Uh, it's been the overcut a little bit for Michael today. I was going to say he could tie this match, though. So. I just played the thin hit here, huh? With a hair of inside, just mild. Yep. And now he's going to have to come out for a 5-9 combo, which I don't think he probably wanted to do in the first place, but it's not too tough. Fell on the nice side of this. Wouldn't have minded being straight, but... <clears throat> Cue ball's going underneath the 8 here. And the only reason being is I'm I'm not a huge fan of trying to stretch the safety on these combos because you miss it a lot. But yeah. this, this one looks fairly natural going that way. Got to be careful you don't hit the high side of the eight here. Yeah. Looks to me, because Efren will put a hair of English on this, he kind of spreads underneath it to me, it looks like. Pretty tough shot. Yeah. Yeah, the only problem is he's left a big pocket. If he doesn't get the snooker, it's going to be close. And he did get the snooker. This will be a pretty billiard shot. Yeah, the kiss, <laughs> the kiss shot's there. You know, the five can come across one rail and make the nine, too. Now, the key to this kick shot is don't overhit it. Um, if you overhit it, you probably scratch by the nine using the nine. You kind of bounce off the five. Now, that doesn't mean baby it, but just, you know, again, I bring that word up, medium, medium-ish, a lot of times. Now he's looking at the curve shot or jumping it with his full cue. Oh, no, he's going for the kick. Good effort there for Michael. He's going to leave a, well, no, kiss the five. It's going to leave a 7-9 combo or kiss shot, though.
Routine combo this time. Were you there at Reds when he made his debut? No, no, no. no I sure wasn't. I was there the year before. 7-5 is our score. No, that really kind of began his legend. Even though I was aware of him, I'd never... <clears throat> I'd read about him, but you never know how much embellishment there is in that, you know, so I wanted to see him for sure. But it was, nobody knew that he was going to appear. He didn't even appear under his name to begin with. But everybody knew him when he left. You know, the funny story that I like is, I guess he had made it to the semifinal under an alias. And, uh, all right. They're switching the two not to be racked in the back. Um, he made it to the semifinal on her alias of Cesar Morales. Of course, everyone knows that. And he went up to Mr. Walling, Red Walling, and said, Mr. Walling, he was afraid of not getting paid if the real name came out. So he came up to him and said, hey, Mr. Wall Mr. Walling, I've been using the, you know, a fake name. My real name's Efren Reyes. I just want to make sure nothing's going to have a problem, you know. Mm-hmm. And Red, of course, told him, don't worry. You're getting your money no matter what. So, mm -hmm. Okay, probably holds for the three in the side. If the four goes by the five, the three in the side really carries you to the four pretty easily. So just barely any right English here. Just come up by the eight kind of mildly. Yeah, like that. Now he's got a real natural. Even if you get a little thinner or a little less, you're still going in the right direction. I'm not sure what he's upset about. Maybe maybe just trying to settle himself because he hasn't hit every ball as well as he wants. I don't think he was mad about the position he was in. Nicely played shot there. Did you know Red Wong? Yeah, a little bit. He was, again, before my time. I was fortunate enough, you know, him and Jersey Red were really good friends. Yeah. So I got a chance to meet him a few times. And uh, it's funny, last time I saw him, uh, it was in the international terminal at the airport. I saw a man about 6'6 with a Q on the back of his hmm. shoulder. And I said, well, let me go find out who this is over here. And it was Red Walling. As soon as he, I saw his front, I thought it was him, even though it had been many years since I'd seen him. But he was heading to South America to go fishing, South America to go fishing. And he goes down there for a month every year and always takes his cue because he plays a little pool with some of the locals down there. And the funny thing is, I'm that's a little light, it looks like. Maybe it has to go a touch. Is I'm from the east side of Houston, Baytown, which mm -hmm. is, you know, just uh, minutes away from North Shore and Channel View where, where Reds was at. Uh, uh, get it wrong, speak. Oh, go. Uh, no. All right, we're going to get a little lefty effort here. I don't think that even cuts. No? Uh, maybe. It doesn't on the overhead, but maybe on the real table it does. <laughs> yeah, you're, I think you might be right more than I look at it. Still might get some lefty effort. Unless he's not edging the ball. It looks like he's going to move the object ball instead of the cue ball. Might bank this at the side pocket. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, yeah. I think. Swish. What a nice shot. Uh, there, there. Yeah. Nice shot. <laughs> yeah. And that's, you know. That classic court. effort. Yeah, exactly, you know. A lot yeah. of what we were talking about earlier, right? To me, that's not one bit surprising. No. <laughs> Back in his day, that was a, it was better than a 50-50 chance he makes that bank. He just has a nice feel for it. He always chooses a speed that just glides on down to the end rail when it doesn't go in. The only time he ever gets cheated on that is if it hits a point. L.J. Bryce <laughs> is reminding me that his dad sponsored Efren to come here. You have to have a sponsorship. And Efren asked me if I would ask Jerry if he would do it, and he sure did. Jerry said he You mean to it. get in the country and all that. Yep. Right? Yeah. Yeah, because uh, you can't be indigent and maybe National Beard Academy rack track there. 
Anyway, Jerry said he'd happily do it, and Ephraim was going to compensate him. And Jerry just said, if you would just play in my pool room for a few days, that would be good enough. Jerry yeah. Breesa? Yep. Yeah. Now, in Utah or where? No, Somewhere. Madison, Wisconsin. Oh, Wisconsin. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So, I know Jerry spends time in Utah. He so. mainly lives in uh, just outside of Phoenix. Yeah, 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 in, in Sun City. Yeah. Grand. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I went there a few years ago and taught for a few days. At, man, have you been down there, Mark? No, I haven't. What a place. I'm talking about you have four communities in the Sun City, and they have four pool rooms. They have four different bigger places in each, you know, one in each community, and really beautiful. Don McCoy lives down there. Uh-huh. I uh, saw him. Um, I went in there. It's funny, Mark. I flew in. I was supposed to work Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and then head to Vegas. So I, I started work at 1030 on Wednesday. I flew in Wednesday morning, went to John Fenwick's house where I was staying, got cleaned up, head to the head to their place there on in the community. Beautiful, beautiful pool room with 12 diamonds. Mm -hmm. uh, I get there about 945, maybe 930. I got a lesson at 1030. This is in the a.m., of course. I go in, and there's a ladies' league with every table taken at 9.30 in the morning. Yeah. Wow, really nice shot here, Michael. Really nice. Um, and, you know, I go in there, and a few people know who I am and get to talk, and a few of those ladies gave me a, a look like, you need to hold it down a little bit. We're serious over here at 9.30 in the morning. Mm -hmm. It was pretty fun to see. But I couldn't believe, in one of the one of the communities there in Sun City, they have a thirty table pool room. How do you like that? F like fourteen gold crowns, mm -hmm. like twelve diamonds, uh, three cushion table, a snooker table, bayer table. Just really awesome stuff they have over there. It's probably the second biggest retirement community in the country, I think, behind the place in Florida. What's the place? The villages. The villages, yeah. That's where Peter Fleming, Pat Fleming's brother, lives in yeah. the villages. I think I knew that. All right, nice speed here, it looks like. Boy, he's playing some dynamite safety. Yeah, and really something we hadn't seen much of during the match. And just he just hadn't had to play a lot of safeties. Look, Efren always wants to go three rails behind this, but I think he's just going to come one rail across. Don't see the three railer there. Maybe he can bend it enough to get three rails. That's what he's doing. Before the four, and then stretch it out after. Ooh, it's been long for him on most of those multi-rail kicks. Mm-hmm. All right. The five, five and six is a little funny. For sure. Did you ever get to play Don McCoy? I played Don some cheap pool back in Olathe a few times uh, when I was younger. Um. He played awfully solid, even though he didn't play full time by any means at that point. And, you know, from everybody that I've ever talked to about that guy, what a solid player he was and great, yeah. great player. Yeah, I knew him for a lot of years and we played a lot of tournaments. He won them. I tried to play in them. Uh, Come down to him in Dallas West quite often. All right, this cue ball is going to run to give Efren a shot. Not an easy one by any means. We were at a big pro tournament in Burlington, Iowa. Keith McCready kind of broke on the scene, was beating everybody. And Don played him a $500 set and did beat him, but he was the only guy that week to beat him. And you got to be a good player at that time because Keith was beating Denny Searcy, Louis Roberts, you know. Yeah, that's one guy I never got to say, see was Searcy. And uh, Jersey Red told me a lot about him as well, that he really liked his game. Kind of famous for playing pay ball on the snooker table. Yeah. 
How many times did Efren finish second in the U.S. Open? Twice? Was it twice? Uh, I know it wants to read Pierce. I think wants to Nick Varner? No. Might have been. Yeah. I know that was a title that escaped him for a long, long time. Yeah, I kind of felt like he had gotten there at least twice before he won it. All right, a little light of a draw there. He's going to be <laughs> laughing about that one a little bit. And he's wondering why. Maybe the tip's just coming up because I don't see the stroke being that bad, uh, Mark, really. No. And I can almost hear the tip. You know, you can hear it when the tip's a little higher, right? It's a little yeah. more of a boom effect. All right. Good shot. Go. <laughs> <laughs> he might hit a couple draw shots. <laughs> All right. Well, Efren Reyes, what a pleasure. Fun match. The crowd is thrilled. Good for him. Get through that. All right, everybody. Thanks for joining us. We'll be back with more uh, action. One pocket coming up. That's our time for this time. Until next time, so long. <laughs>